From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Well, this is a show we do once a year. And I must tell you that uh, it doesn't matter how many times we do it, things don't change. They don't. Every year at this time, you get public service announcements. You get beer commercials and booze commercials and wine commercials begging you to be responsible at this time of year. Drink responsibly. Remember that old line about voting in the city of Chicago, vote early and vote often? You know, it's like drink responsibly. And drink plenty of our product. <laughs> and, and come on, it's like a wink and a nod. We all know that we love to drink a lot of the product. We just love it. You know, we, come on. We do, not, we do not drink a beer in America or two beers to celebrate the holiday. We love to drink. We love it. By the way, I love to drink. I'm not putting myself above you or anybody. America's got the biggest variety. And I have traveled, trust me, the biggest variety of brewed, distilled, and uh, vinted beverages uh, in the whole world, because we can choose from the whole world, plus we have our own great products here. How great is that? It's fantastic. Hell, I do a radio program devoted to drinking called The Tasting Room. Weekends, check your local listings. So understand where I'm coming from. I'm not a teetotaler. I'm not uh, an abstinence freak. I'm not one of these people who favors prohibition. I'm not a temperance supporter. None of that. None of that. I am a guy who enjoys a good drink. I do. And I might tell you that um, this segment of the program is not to criticize drinking. It's the great American pastime, for God's sake. But baseball? Forget that. What would baseball be without beer? Lots of beer. It would be some long, slow, boring game. Now, it's a long, slow, boring game with beer. Much better. You see, you see where I'm coming from here. You know, people say, I feel your pain. I'm not feeling any pain. I'll tell you right now. But here's the thing. We love to talk in this country about drunk driving. Drinking responsibly, not drinking and driving. Take the keys from somebody. Friends don't let friends drive drunk. I mean, we've been hearing these slogans and public service announcements. And we've been hearing those threatening commercials where the guy comes on and says, cops are cracking down. They're cracking down. They're coming after you. But the reality is it doesn't matter how much they say they're cracking down because cops can only do what the law allows them to do. And I happen to believe that every state in America finds it more profitable. First of all, they 
if they are being lobbied by the industry, that might have something to do with it, and who could blame them for lobbying? But on top of that, how much money do states make giving you big fines, charging you court costs, sending you to alcohol re-education classes over and over and over? They don't want to stop drunk driving. Not to mention a legal system that brings you in there and charges you legal fees every time you get in trouble. They want to make it as expensive as possible for you, but they don't want to stop drunk driving. See, there's other countries that want to stop drunk driving. There are countries where you drive drunk once, you get a five-year mandatory prison sentence. There are countries where you get life in prison for driving drunk once. You think there's drunk driving there? No. No. Not at all. The bottom line here is that we don't want to stop drunk driving. We want drunk driving to be profitable. And the proof is in the pudding. As much as they say they're cracking down, how many times have you heard of the guy who gets the DUI? 16, 17 times. He's back. He's, <laughs> he's back in court again. Now, someone who has 16 DUIs, not only should they not have a driver's license, and I, I'm guessing the guy with 16 DUIs didn't have his driver's license anymore, shouldn't have a car, and he shouldn't have his freedom. That guy should be in prison. But he's not. Oh, just go to AA for a year and a half, get your card signed, take the alcohol re-education class, pay $35,000 in fines and fees, whatever, and then, uh, well, good luck to you. We don't want to fix it. We don't want to fix it. We don't. Let me read to you some of the statistics about drunk driving just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, this is from 2006. Don't ask me where I get my statistics. I always tell you, and if you weren't listening, I'm not going to repeat it, okay? According to the NHTSA, 2006, alcohol-related motor vehicle crashes kill someone every 31 minutes in America and non-fatally injure someone every two minutes. Each year, alcohol-related crashes in the United States cost about $51 billion. $51 billion with a B. During 2005, 16,885 people in the United States died in alcohol-related motor vehicle crashes, representing 39% of all traffic-related deaths. In 2005, nearly 1.4 million drivers were arrested for driving under the influence of alcohol or narcotics. That's according to the Department of Justice. That's less than 1%. Of the 100, are you hearing this? 159 million self-reported episodes of alcohol-impaired driving among U.S. adults each year. So you hearing what I'm saying? By the way, you'll hear some of those during this program. According to a survey. They took a certain number of people, a certain number of episodes. They asked people, do you ever drive drunk? Yes. How many times? They put in an amount. In a year, people reported voluntarily when not fearing prosecution. 159 million episodes of alcohol-impaired driving among U.S. adults 159 million. That's like 15.9 million people driving drunk 10 times a year. 
or 1.59 million people driving drunk 100 times a year. Okay, do you understand what I'm saying here? So you hear those commercials on the radio, officers are cracking down, we're coming to get you. It's like, yeah, well, you know, again, they do the best they can. Police officers who have the toughest job in the world, they have to live with the laws we give them. And we really don't want to stop drunk driving. We don't. We like driving drunk. We enjoy it. We like not having to pay for a cab. We like the challenge of driving drunk. We like it. Let's just tell the truth. We like it. Especially in Southern California. This isn't Chicago or Boston or New York when, you know, you get your drink on and then you jump onto the subway and ride home. You pay, you know, $10 for a cab ride and suddenly you're at your apartment building. We live in a, we live in an environment in Southern California and I know we have listeners in Dallas who pretty much have the same atmosphere that we have here in LA. We have bars with parking lots. Dallas has strip clubs with parking lots, big ones. And of course, all those, all those, Pseudo Irish pubs, Bennigan's, Hooligans, <laughs> whatever they're called, and the Mexican places, El Torito, you name them. They've got parking lots as big as, uh, you know, a, a small stadium. Because there's, there's no public transportation. And let's face it, the average waking guy is not going to spend 40 or $50 to traverse 10, 15, 20 miles to get home after having a couple of pops. That's the truth. Nobody ever has any plain talk about this. You know, if, if, for example, the state liquor authorities could have a lot of control over this. Imagine how many less people would go to bars if a bar could not get a liquor license if it had a parking lot. Like if the state liquor authority in your state, wherever you are, said, we'll give you a liquor license. But we're coming to inspect the premises, and if you have one parking space on the premises, we're not going to issue a bar license, not going to issue a liquor license. You can't get one. Thereby making it impossible for people to find a parking space at the bar. How many less people would be there drinking? I mean, let's face it. If, if drinking and driving is wrong, why do bars have parking lots? And it's simple. It's because the state where you live is making so much money fining people for driving drunk, making them go to alcohol classes and charging them thousands of dollars. It's too profitable. Seriously. Why do you have to go to a place like, you know, Upland or Rancho Cucamonga or Santa Barbara to find cops at the bar at closing time? Why is it that in most places there are no cops at the bar? Isn't that the easiest way to catch people? Or to intimidate them into not drinking too much or maybe to, you know, take in a cab? Well, again, it's way more profitable, just like it's, you know, like, like we have those freeway chases all the time that are so entertaining to all of us, which frequently result in injuries and death. Um, it's way more uh, profitable to have cops chasing these guys down on the freeway or in the local streets. And then arresting them and putting them through the whole system and charging them fees every step along the way. Tell you what, if there was a, a mandatory prison sentence for a first DUI, do you think we'd have as much of it as we have? And you know what? In this particular venue, I'm not even saying what we should do or shouldn't do. I'm just saying, let's stop lying about this, okay? The government has no interest in stopping drunk driving at all matter what laws they make. It's like when they do Megan's Law. They have to appear to be doing something. What good does it do to release a child molester back into the public, but then you release his address and zip code on the Internet so people can find him? What is the point of that? If somebody is that dangerous, maybe they don't belong out of prison. But the government has to give you the impression that they're doing something. And that's the same thing with drunk driving. They want to give you the impression that they're doing something. Says here, drugs other than alcohol, such as marijuana and cocaine, are involved in about 18% of motor vehicle driver deaths. These other drugs are generally used in combination with alcohol. More than half of the 414 child passengers, 
child passengers, ages 14 and younger, who died in alcohol-related crashes during 2005 were riding with the drinking driver. How do you like that? Hey, right, Jennifer, get in the car. Bobby's going to drive you home. <laughs> Good work, Mom. In 2005, 48 children aged 14 years or younger were killed as pedestrians or pedicyclists struck by impaired drivers. All right? Of the 1,946 traffic fatalities among children aged 0 to 14 years in 2005, are you listening, Brittany? 21% involved alcohol. That's right. It just goes on and on. So I am not a scolding mom. I'm not a nagger. And I'm a, uh, I'm not a leader of a temperance move by any stretch. I love to booze. I love it. What I'm tired of is hearing all the threats of all these laws and the cops are coming to get you. When in reality, this is just a big scam. The laws aren't having any impact at all. They're not having any impact at all. I salute our police officers for working so hard, doing so much with so little, especially in L.A. where we never have enough police to cover the number of square miles of this city. I mean, on a per square mile basis, we have half the police officers in New York City. Half. With a much bigger gang problem and, of course, the freeways and all the people who drive drunk and stoned and whatever. I mean... It's just amazing what these guys do with the, the little resources they have. This is not a criticism of the police. On the contrary, I salute police officers. I think they do a fantastic job. And I've had nothing but good experiences with cops. I don't care what experiences you've had. I've had good ones. But I just want to tell you that all of the threats and all of the laws are having no impact at all. They're having no impact at all. And every year, for an afternoon or an evening, I prove it. I'm going to prove it right now. Here we are, smack dab in the holiday season. And in Southern California, our show runs live during the rush hour. During traffic. There's people in traffic. And people in traffic have no idea how many on that freeway or on that highway or on that local boulevard, they have no idea how many people driving right next to them are bombed right now. I mean, you would think with all these laws and all these public service announcements, you would think you wouldn't have to think about this. When you hear who calls it during this segment, it's going to scare the crap out of you. I'm telling you drunk driving laws don't work, and here's how I'm going to prove it. The way I prove it every year. We're going to clear our phone lines. Oh, Dean just loves doing that. We're going to clear the phone lines, and we're going to talk during this segment of the program only, only to drunk drivers. If you're drunk, pick up your cell phone and call me here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. I really want to hear how south people are getting. If you've got a beer in the cup holder of your car, if you've got a scotch and soda there, or, you know, a margarita, maybe you've got a sport bottle. How many of you use, like, a sport bottle or, you know, a 7-Eleven cup or something to disguise the booze? You put booze in a 7-Eleven cup, and you're sitting there, you know, a little circus straw or a slurpy straw or something. Right? How many keep a bottle under the seat, front seat? How many of you mix drinks in the car? We've talked to all of these people, all of them. If you're drunk and driving right now, we're not going to turn you in. Uh, we are not here to uh, to try to catch you. We're not here, uh, you know, much as that would be tempting to do, then nobody would call in. If you're drinking now, again, if you're if you're on something else, today's show's not about that. We're not about if you're smoking weed or you're doing crank or you're you're tweaking with you know that's a whole other show. Holiday season, people are boozing it up, 
and then get in the car driving. If you had been boozing it up and then you got behind the wheel, or if you're boozing it up behind the wheel, I want to hear from you right now. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I've been listening to you, and that is the best advice. Keep her out of the house. Oh, my God. She tried to. She's like, oh, I, I need a place to stay for, for just a week. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Go stay with one of your gay friends. No, no. That's right. That's right. Stay with one of your gay friends is a good answer. I like that. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's... The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM, our yearly call for drunk drivers to call in from their cell phones. If that's you, call me, 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Now, Chris, Chris is a teacher. Chris, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How you doing? How you doing, Chris? Listen, Tom. Uh, what do you, uh, you know, I, I didn't. I missed the first part of your show. If you could uh, just uh, refresh me about what uh, the problem about drinking and driving. I'm not saying what the problem is. I'm simply saying that there is uh, some hypocrisy because they keep saying how terrible drunk driving is, and yet they never really make any serious laws against it. Uh, well, actually, there's some serious laws, Tom, but but there's uh, more serious laws against other drugs that people take. Alcohol is just a drug, Tom. No, but, I, but I'm not talking about drinking. I'm talking about drinking and then driving a car. Well, uh, you know, Tom, everybody, everybody's physicality is different. And uh, depending uh, largely upon how big you are, uh, your body can take a lot more consumption than... Uh, well, that's uh, not what I'm talking... You're not hearing me. You don't know what I'm talking about here. Pardon me, sir. Pardon me. All right. I don't care how much it takes you to get drunk. Once you are determined to be drunk, I don't care if you drank a quart of whiskey because you're 600 pounds or a glass of whiskey and you're 98 pounds. It doesn't matter. Once you're determined to be drunk, the punishment is relatively uh, inconsequential in most places. Uh, I would have to disagree with that, Tom. Really? There are some very heavy laws against uh, drinking and driving. The mother, mothers against uh, no, no, heavy, and heavy. A heavy law would would prevent you from doing it. I disagree, Tom. Are you drunk, drinking and driving right now? Yes, I am. Well, if there was a heavy law, you wouldn't be, would you? Well, Tom, I'm taking a chance. Yeah, but the, the point is, it, a it's a rather low risk game. It's not a low risk, Tom. No, because it, it hit the first time. It's it's uh, thousands of dollars just for the fines, and it's uh, thousands of dollars to get yourself a good lawyer. And you advertise a good one. I forget with Top Gun, whatever this guy is called. Uh, well, the, uh, you well, the point I'm making to you is, uh, how many people are getting mandatory prison time the first time? Uh, Tom, that's beyond my scope of comprehension. I don't know. You, really, beyond your scope of comprehension, you you're a teacher. I'm a teacher, Tom, but I don't keep track of statistics on drunk drivers. I'm not talking about statistics. People are not getting a mandatory one-year prison sentence for driving drunk on a first well, offense. My question would be: My question would be, why not? Because it's too profitable for the government. Well, you know what? I can't argue with that, Tom. Uh, I think that everything, absolutely everything that is against anything that people like to do, whether it be alcohol or cocaine or marijuana or heroin, is all based upon that there's already an established bureaucracy that's fighting this. So we can't legalize anything and we can't do anything about it because there's just too strong. Uh, Again, that's fine. Rush, well, let's, rush let's review. Keep the thing going. What are you drinking today? I'm sorry? What are you drinking this evening? Uh, I've had uh, three beers at a pool hall and uh, uh, you a screwdriver, uh, orange juice and vodka prior to that one. So you had one screwdriver and three beers. Yes, sir. And you're done now. Uh, I'm not drunk. I'm driving. No, I, I said know, done. I D U N done. I'm a small person. No, I was asking you, are you done drinking? You don't have anything in the car with you now, do you? No, I don't. All right. Three beers and a screwdriver, and what's your weight approximately? 160 pounds. So that would probably put you over the legal limit. Would it not? I think so. And why do you take this risk? Uh, because I enjoy the life that I live, Tom. Mm-hmm. And uh, what level of teacher are you? Elementary? High school? What do you teach? 
Uh, that's really none of your business, Tom. I'm not asking where you live or where you teach or anything like that. You're anonymous. I'm a teacher of human beings in this world, Tom. Oh, come on. You could be a teacher at a trade school. You could be a teacher at uh, a driving school, for all I know. I'm just trying to get a general idea. I'm not trying to pin you down. Why do you want that general idea, Tom? I'm just curious because it's interesting in the general scheme of things. Again, let me repeat. Tom, we're not here. Me back after I get off the air, and I'd be happy to fail you on any. We're not topic. trying to. You understand? We're not trying to catch you. I don't know where you are. I don't know who you are. I, I don't told know. I told Dina where where I was driving from, and that's close. Well, do you really think that? Well, you think I'm the FBI? You really think I'm no, trying to Tom. track you down? Actually, We've been really doing this. You, We've been doing this for years. We've never turned anybody in. It's not a matter of turning in. It's a matter of keeping. Uh, Tom, what was? The, did you have a next question for me? I think that was pretty much all I needed to ask. Thank you, Tom, for taking my call. Oh my God. Tom Likes. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Man, you know, you need to exterminate this broad on the line, man, because all I'm hearing is, me, 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 me. Oh, we're on our phone, man. She's the kind of chick that you talk about all the time, man. It's the Tom Likes Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1 800 5 800 Tom. Talking to people who are drinking and driving. If you're a drunk driver, you call it from your cell phone. I'd like to hear from you right now. But you got to be driving now while you're calling in. Understand? Henry on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Henry. How are you, buddy? I'm doing great. I am a member of a Metropolitan Police Department. Yes. And I'm having a couple beers right now on the way home. Right there in the car? Right. In the, no, 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 not that car. No, no, your my, car. You're in your personal car. My personal vehicle. That's right. What What, what are we drinking tonight? I just stopped the store and got a six-pack of beer and heading over to... Pick up the kids in the home. How much? Oh, and you're going to pick up the kids, uh huh? And uh, so, did you have any before you got in the car, or you you you, you just? No, 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 not then. So you just started uh, popping a few cold ones when you got in. Yeah, I'm getting. We're about in the third one now. What what brand are we drinking tonight? Uh, well, Anheuser Busch concoction. Oh, I, so is it a beer? Or is it one of those? No, just no, just a beer. Just a beer. Just beer. Mm hmm. I'm not growing up for any of them other things. And how often do you do this? Every day I'm away home from work. Every day. Every day. Now, have you ever been pulled over? When I was a little younger, I was. Were you an officer at that time? No, I was in I was in school at that time. Did you get arrested? I did. And so you you had uh, a conviction for that, or did it get reduced as usual to a reckless driving reduced, or something? It got reduced as usual to nothing. Right. Slap on the hand. Now, uh, are you out on patrol? Do you uh, uh, or do you work in an office somewhere? Do you are you out there in a position where you would have to bust guys like you? Um, not anymore. I've I've moved up a little bit. Uh, I was in a radio car for approximately twelve years. No, I get to wear street clothes. And, and do you ever drink anything stronger than that and get in the vehicle? No, I don't drink anything stronger than that anyway. I, I'm not, <clears throat> although there's a lot of good stuff out there, Tom, I'm not growing up for enough for that. Now, if you got pulled over, let's say you had a tail light out, you know how that goes. Yeah. Uh, would you pull rank and, uh, you know, uh, show your badge or something, and would you get off? Um, there's... It depends on where you're at. Uh, when my op when my wallet opens, uh, my badge is right there. And there's two things going to happen. There's either a professional courtesy that's going to happen, and we're going to get you off over here and get you back home, or, hey, get the hell out of here. Don't let us see you again. But officers don't get arrested for doing this, do they? Why would we? I understand. Why would we? I understand. You know, my my brother is a uh, is a uh, corrections officer, 
and gets many of the same professional courtesies you do. He does not drive with beer in the car. Tom, you and I have met more on more than one occasion, but it it uh no, it it happens every day, brother, every day. Look at that. And the statistics in some cities are one in five drivers. One in five. Especially in some metropolitan areas of our region. And, dur and during the hol and during the holidays. No, 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 no. That's during the year. Right. I'm saying during the holidays, the numbers must be much higher. During the year, in most of Southern California and Southern Nevada, these regions, one in five drivers is impaired. Wow. Now, do you consider yourself impaired? No, not right now. Do you think by the time you get to where you're going, you might be? Possibly. And uh, you're picking up your kids? I'm picking up one of them tonight. And they get in your car? He's getting in my car. He'll probably drive us home when I, after I get him, though. Oh, I see. But, it, no, it, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a daily occurrence, and I probably shouldn't be telling on some of us, but... It happens every day, brother. Well, you know, um, when I grew up, we didn't have all this fuss about drinking and driving. And uh, my dad uh, one time became pick me up my cousin's house. He was blind drunk. <laughs> and he insisted I get in the car, and I was too young to drive. So I had to get my, in the car. My dad was an old field hand in, around Long Beach all my life. And... Uh, there was a place used to be there back in the 60s and 70s that isn't there anymore that uh, you could go over there and cash your check. And after you cash your check, they gave you a free 12 pack of beer. Well, everybody just put 12 pack of beer in the well, truck and back inside. Are you serious? <laughs> I don't even know if that's legal today. No, it's not today. It was It was then. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. We'd walk right from the junior high right down there and get our old man to go home. Wow. Well, Henry, uh, thank you for that. I appreciate the call. So far, we have a teacher and a police officer who are driving drunk tonight on the freeways. 1-800-5800-TOM is her telephone number. Here's Suzanne on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yes. Hi, Tom. Hi. I My heart skipped a beat when I heard what you that you were encouraging people who were under the influence to call you. Yeah. I I have a hard time driving. I thought, well, I'm going to pick up my cell phone and call because this is important enough. But it distracts me to be on the phone while I'm driving sober. So I'm thinking, oh, my God, you're asking people to call in and they're under the influence. If they're not calling me, they're calling their girlfriend or they're calling their wife or they're calling their kids to say they'll be there soon to pick them up. I mean, it's not like they've got both hands on the wheel worried about getting caught, clearly. Oh, I don't know. Maybe they weren't calling anybody. So you, I, so what, are you telling me you'd rather people not know about this? No. You know, I, I agree with you. I, I don't think that um, the laws are going to stop the problem. I think as long as there's alcohol. Oh, the laws would stop the problem if they were severe. I'll tell you what, if you had the death penalty, it would stop it. Yes. If two, I, I if two DUIs got enough. if two DUIs got your life in prison or a DUI that resulted in an injury to anybody resulted in life in prison, uh you think people would think twice? Yes, I do. I, I know that there's services out there that it's free ride home. I wish I had the numbers, but I mean, I was listening and I heard the cop who's having a few on his way home, and I thought, oh my God. Doesn't that tell you the depths of this problem? Exactly. I, I, well, if I didn't do this show, you wouldn't know about that. Well, it might be true. It might be, it might be having a chain reaction right now, but I, I just know cell phones and driving aren't good. I try not to do it let alone someone is drunk right yes, now. Yes, but especially where I live in Southern California, uh, most people do it sober or drunk. 
That's just the way it is. And I think yeah. I think it's important for people to know that these laws are a waste of time. Yeah, I, it's hard to think that they're not doing any good, but maybe there's a you know there must be a better way to get if people are gonna gonna drink too much. It's very I think most people are over the legal legal limit if they have one drink, and that same hour they're behind the wheel of a car. A lot of people are already over the legal limit, and that. And that supposedly is impairing their ability, their reflex, their reflex time. Yeah, well, time. guess what? Uh, those people are out there right now heading home from exactly. holiday yeah, parties, heading home from work. Yeah, there's got to be a, some other way to to cut down on the drinking and driving. Well, instead of having laws that require people to go to uh, alcohol education class, uh, you got to put people in prison for some hard time. But we'll never do that. This is too profitable. Thank you, Suzanne. one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. This is Robert on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Robert. What's up? Well, I'm talking to first time caller. Well, thank you for that. I'm talking to drunk okay. drivers, calling from their cell phones. Are you a drunk okay, driver? I'm drunk. I mean I drink every I'm drinking now. I drink when I drive. I do it every day. Every My day. My friends do it, you know, it's like it's the maintenance of a person, to tell you the truth. To me, if you can operate a motor vehicle and it influence alcohol, power to you. Some people just can't do it. What are you drinking right now? Hennessy, of course. Hennessy. You're drinking Hennessy, Hennessy. in the car. Do you have a big bottle? Uh, well, I had the fifth earlier. I had like a pint earlier. I got a 200 milliliter now, whatever that is. I guess pint, whatever, quart. I don't know. You know? 200 actually, milliliters is, is less than a pint. That's less than a pint? Okay, well, I drink fifth. I drink pint. I drink all those bottles. I'm about to go get another one in a minute, as a matter of fact. Really? Yeah, well, I called you when I was close to actually where you're at. I actually reside close to where you where you record at, and I decided to stay on the phone and just keep driving on the freeways. I'm in downtown Los Angeles right now on the 110 South. So um, how much have you had all together? Do you remember? Uh... I, I couldn't even do that. And were you drinking at least, at least a fifth, at least at least a fifth days. of Hennessy? And were at you least. drink? Were you drinking before you got in the car? Well, yeah, I was drinking. I drink, I drink. And it just so happened I needed to get in the car and go. I had to go and do what I had to do. So I got in the car and I went, and I'm drinking, and it came with me. Have you ever gotten caught? That's the funny thing. I was laughing about these callers talking about you could get caught because the the amount of people that drink and drive in Los Angeles and smoke weed in Los Angeles. As well as so many other drugs is ridiculous. People wouldn't even believe like the numbers. It's like ridiculous, and the rational people in college, the percentile is very low. To yeah. me, to the people I know, it's very low. There's not enough cops really to enforce it. And honestly, I've always said it. You know, I, I deal with the criminal lifestyle myself. I won't go into detail about that on your show, but crime makes money, and that's what it is. You know, they they realize they make more money out of rehabs and prevention, and people going to court and fines than they do stopping it. And that's why you won't stop because even if you get caught, I the... mean, if I, I mean, like I got people. If I get stopped, I'm, my friends will pick me up and I'll go. I'll drink in their car. My friends will drink in my car. Like that's not the answer. It's not going to stop. It doesn't stop. It's it's for some people. It's hereditary. For some people, it's an now. Addiction. Are you an alcoholic? I, I mean, can you do you get Honestly, drunk? I did the NA game, and to be truthful in this day and age. Yeah, I am alcoholic. That's what I am, you know. Know what you are to admit it, you know. So I'm, 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 here's why I'm asking you that question. Do you do you get drunk? Do you feel drunk when you're drunk? Honestly, a lot of my friends tell me to the point that I drink. It's like funny. It's like you drink all that Hennessy and you don't get drunk. I guess I've just built an immunity. I get drunk. I'm, if a cop pulls me over right now in downtown Los Angeles, I'm going to jail. I mean, I'm DUI. Yeah, I'm saucy. Uh-huh. I'm going. You no, know, I'm going. You know. Like, but you I'm don't. Drunk, you just you know? don't. You can't feel that you're drunk. Uh, you're because you're not capable because you're drunk so uh, often. I'm drunk. That's a lie. Gotta I, watch I can't your mouth around the radio. I, I know. I know. I'm sorry, Tom. I know the potty mouth. I know you don't like him. I'm sorry, Dad. Well, son, uh, be careful out there. The Tom Likas Show.